Ken will share his thoughts with us today on innovation, pushing back the frontiers of chiropractic education. Please give a warm welcome to Ken Bar. First of all, I think innovation and development is essential for our profession. And in some areas, uh, 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 and I won't mention which areas, there are some stagnation, I think, in the profession. It's not here. Uh, but there are some areas that could do a lot, lot better than they're doing at the moment. There was someone here from Canada, I think. Uh, is there someone mentioned Canada? Richard Brown. Yeah, they, well, Richard isn't from Canada. <laughs> I, I spoke with Jean Moss uh, uh, just the other day, and she was, used to be the, the president of the CMCC, and she's now the president of the CCEI International. And, and she was very envious of the... the uh, 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 the developments that this organisation is doing, getting uh, uh, universities in in the UK <coughs> that are, are developing chiropractic courses. They've tried in Canada and, and they haven't really succeeded more than those two that are there now. So, well done. Now, examples of innovation. I'll give you three examples. Uh, Matthew has already alluded to one of them which obviously I've been involved with uh, a lot myself. Uh, but the first example is uh, uh, um, the, un the development at the University of Zurich. Um, in the 1970s, a young medical student called Christian Gerber had a traffic accident, and he fractured a vertebra in his neck. He went to, car uh, he went to, to the medical profession and didn't get any help. He still suffered from his pain. He went to a chiropractor called Flavio Grillo. Some of you will remember him, an excellent teacher. Flavio took x-rays of him and, 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 and could actually see that, that I can't remember where the fracture was. I think it was C2, which obviously is, is fairly serious. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, Christian Gerber was put into a collar and after six weeks he was completely pain-free. After that time, he was a great supporter of the chiropractic profession. He became uh, 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 a professor of medicine, orthopedic medicine, and the head of the Balkrist University Hospital in Zurich, which is associated with the, uh, uh, um, with the Zurich Medical School. Now, a chiropractor called Daniel Muhlmann, who was the president of the Swiss Association in 1998-1999, got together with Christian Gerber and said, can't we start a chiropractic program at Zurich University at the medical school? Well, this was, at the time, uh, uh, pretty, pretty advanced. Um, now, it took a long time, but in 2008, after long discussions between the, 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 the medical profession at Zurich University and the chiropractic profession, it wasn't all clear that they were in favor of it either. But it also took about three and a half million Swiss francs. But eventually in 2008, the first uh, uh, cohort of students, chiropractic students, entered Zurich University. It was a three year uh, uh, um, bachelor in medicine and a three-year master's in chiropractic medicine. So now we have chiropractors in Zurich uh, uh, that are at, on par in, in the educational sense and with the same authority uh, that the medical profession have in, in, um, in, in Switzerland. So that has changed the profession within and the perception of the profession without. And I think that is a, an excellent uh, 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 development for the profession. It's not going to be able to happen everywhere, but I think we should be very, very proud of what's happened in Switzerland and in Zurich. The second example is the AECC, and I had the great privilege of, of joining the AECC as its leader at the right time. Um, I know we have Tony Metcalf in the audience, and he was one of the reasons for this to happen, both you know, uh, uh, in many ways. But the, the most positive way was that um, he introduced a, uh, a professor of medicine onto our board, Sean Hilton, who was the dean of the St. George's Medical School. And when, when Tony left and I became principal, 
uh, um, Sean Hilton became the chairman of the board. And I think that's the single most important appointment that we could have made. Because it meant that we had a medical professional, we had an educationalist, and we had someone that wanted to develop uh, the institution together with the chiropractic profession, because he was obviously also a very great supporter of the profession. So that, I think, is, 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 it's, again, shows that there are individuals at the right time. Like in Switzerland, you have two individuals at the ACC, there were two individuals that actually got together and could develop it. Obviously at the ACC, we are standing on the shoulders of many, many, and some of you are here and know that this, this the ACC has been developed by, by a lot of effort from many people. This was just the, the sort of step change that happened at that time. We were able to move our accreditation, as you said, from Portsmouth University to Bournemouth University. And that allowed us public funding for our students, and that meant that we could increase the number of students at the college. It meant that the board would, would allow us to, to, to uh, 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 build a new clinic. They released four and a half million pounds, together with some money from you lot as well. But it, it actually made it possible for us to build this clinic. It also uh, allowed us to change the structure of the board such that we removed uh, uh, a lot of the, the, the uh, um, power, should we say, of the chiropractic profession. And we brought in a lot of individuals with expertise in education, in finance, in, in law, in accountancy, to actually make the board much more professional. And in 2010, they accepted our strategy, which was the 2020 vision, uh, which said, as Matthew uh, pointed out, that in 2020, the ACC would be an independent healthcare university college with its own degree awarding powers. And with people like Harmo Thiel, Jenny Bolton at the ACC, that was driven through earlier than 2020. It's already happened. And now the ACC are looking at research degree awarding powers, which is a much more difficult awarding power to have. But hopefully, if they achieve that by 2020, again, that is tremendous development at you know, the forefront of, of and pushing the profession forward. Now, the third example of, of innovation and development in chiropractic education, and we're talking about education here now, is, is the University of Central Queensland in Australia. And Richard will know a little bit about this as well. Uh, here we had, again, two individuals, Barry Draper, a chiropractor with a PhD from Melbourne, and Andrew Vitiello, Vitiello a chiropractor with a PhD also from Melbourne, two Australians. I actually employed Andrew, and he worked at the ACC for six years, and he was a, became a senior, a senior tutor and, 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 and was an in very, very good uh, 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 lecturer. Now, he was also passionately interested in IT. So I went into his office some days and he was working on this magic IT stuff all the time. Now, these two people got together and they convinced the University of Central Queensland to develop online uh, uh, courses for chiropractors and they started a course in 2013 a three-year BSc followed by a two-year master's program, which has developed more than 50% online. Now, that then has moved the, the, the institution such that it can deliver this course to another three uh, centers in Australia. So they've got four courses delivered online. Again, financially very, very useful because the infrastructure within those uh, institutions are much less than would needed otherwise. Of course, you have to have uh, the, the clinical aspect, the practical aspect has to be there. But in total, it's a very efficient program to deliver. It has also allowed access to students that would never have contemplated uh, 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 studying chiropractic because they can have a much better life uh, uh, balance together with their studies. They can do them, as I said, online a lot of it, can still do some work, can still earn some money during the time. And also, it's, it's, it's delivered at, at four different 
uh, locations. Something to think about for, for, for perhaps not for the UK, I don't know, but certainly for the rest of Europe. Um, it, it, again, it, 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 it is a, a, a development that is innovative and it comes out of ideas from certain people that met up and were there at the right time. And they had the support from the people that had you know, the money to, to actually invest in this. So those are three examples of innovative chiropractic education. And there are lots of others. I mean, we have here, you have people with, from the Royal College of Chiropractors. That's an innovation in education at the postgraduate level, which is also important. Uh, um, but going forward, I think this, this uh, uh, um, the Society for Promoting Chiropractic Education growing the profession. I think it's, it's excellent. What I, what I would uh, focus on is collaborate, collaboration. That should be in the next strategy. I would like you to create a space for these institutions that you actually help develop now. Create a space for those to come together, to come together to form a collaborative initiative where students could study at all those institutions they could have a joint degree so that the institutions actually gave a degree jointly to these students. Uh, you can get the staff, the chiropractic staff together to develop innovative ways of teaching chiropractic technique, of developing, that's something that I find is not developed hardly at all over these years, very little. It should be a lot more. We should do a lot more on that. But if you got these institutions together, they could pool the knowledge, pool, get the, the other teaching staff together to develop online courses specifically for this consortium, for this collaboration. Uh, start joint summer schools where students who have not got the qualification to access chiropractic training could do summer schools in order to, to be able to enroll in these uh, uh, institutions. Get the researchers together to, to, to create a body of researchers that could have uh, 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 develop research which would have much more impact and perhaps also guide them to research that has much more uh, 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 impact on the practical part of chiropractic rather than some esoteric type. I think we spent a lot of money on research and perhaps not got enough out of it. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, Get the management together to create uh, 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 leadership courses for our young uh, uh, graduates so that you, know, you don't have all these old fogies standing talking to you all the time. We need a lot of renewal in, in the profession. So I think that you can do that. And reflecting on my own sort of next year, I, it was 50 years since I entered this profession. And when I started in the 60s, 70s, e even 80s, I think the profession was all about education, education, education. And it's nice to see some leaders of, of the profession, and it, uh, even from Italy and Ireland and so on here, uh, and the BCA, of course. Uh, then in, in the, in the uh, uh, 80s, 90s, up to perhaps 2000, it was legislation, registration, legislation, and we got some people that worked really hard on that here as well. And that was important. And then in the 2000s, it became research, research, research. We sunk virtually all the priority of the profession was into research, and the amount of money that I've seen gone into research, even from the AACC, was sort of, I cringe when I think about it. But of course research is important, but I feel that we've got We've gone round and come back to the beginning. Education, education, education. I think that pound for pound or euro for euro, you will get more out of your investment if you, if you prioritise education in the next 10 to 20 years. Of course you should support research, but you should actively in your own countries, in your own strategies, you should actually put it down on paper and say education, education, education. And we will get the money, because this sort of collaborative framework needs money, because money talks. As you can see in those three examples, also, that's also about money. 
So thank you for listening to me. Thank you.